Good morning and welcome to the final episode in our PwC Boardroom Forum Live series on operationalizing ESG within your organization. My name is Taruna Naidu and I am excited to be joined by Isabel Papadakis, who leads our alliance program within our technology consulting practice. Now, Isabel, data is really synonymous with any conversation on ESG and uh, its analysis is inevitable as organizations really face greater pressures to provide commitments and updates on their sustainability and ethical practices. And ESG data is broad, right? It's not limited to an organization's impact on climate or you know, carbon emissions, et cetera. And I think what we've seen recently is that stakeholders, you know, are beyond our regulators. So, you know, organizations having a number of stakeholders, such as investors, employees, uh, customers, suppliers, etc., that are really interested in an organization's employment practices, in their governance practices. Um, and organizations are really faced with having to build trust and transparency um, with these multitude of stakeholders. So having access to the right data seems like it's a really critical driver in, uh, in understanding process efficiency, on understanding the impact of operations on the environment, and it seems to also facilitate faster decision-making on practices that can adversely affect sustainability. So I guess to kick us off in the conversation, Isabel, uh, what are some of the common challenges that you are seeing when it comes to ESG data reporting? Good. Thank you, Tarina. So you, you highlighted some of the challenges in your opening statement. The first one that we see, obviously, is that the metrics that organizations have to report on are increasingly broad. So like you rightly said, it's no longer a climate impact conversation, mm -hmm. impact on the environment. Uh, you know, stakeholders are interested in how they are running their governance processes, their sustainability practice, their ethical and human rights practices. And uh, these are also no longer a nice to have. So they're increasingly bored mm. and they're becoming more mandatory. So that brings the second challenge, which is around the reporting frameworks that are rapidly evolving. So there are a number of global frameworks in place that are seeking to standardize and harmonize the data that's required for ESG reporting. Mm -hmm. However, these, you know, there, there are various uh, reports depending on the regulations and uh, not all of them are mandatory right now. So it's very easy for organizations to get lost thinking about those reports and those regulations mm -hmm. instead of really thinking about the sustainability metrics that are going to change their own operations and result in long-term viability for themselves. And then the third point comes to, to the data, right? That is, I believe, a huge challenge in and of itself. Uh, there are very few organizations that have robust enterprise-wide data management mm. and data collection and analysis uh, platforms. And uh, so the, a lot of this data is sitting in silos across different departments, different stakeholders. And what we find is because sustainability was never at the core mm. of what the business focused on from a financial perspective, there are many metrics that don't actually exist mm. or that haven't been factored into in the past. So when it comes to the data, it's a fine balancing act between having to understand what it takes to be profitable and sustainable. And it just compounds that data challenge. Mm. So, I mean, there, there are many more, but I would say those are the top three that come to mind in as far as preparing yourself for a, a ESG reporting journey. Mm. And Isabel, I mean, just those top three challenges seem mm. extensive enough, right? Mm. <laughs> but from an organization's perspective, I suppose, what's the cost of not, uh, you know, identifying the right issues in a timely manner? Um, I mean, and again, this takes different dimensions, but you're quite right. When we talk about ESG, it's synonymous with transparency. Uh, it's synonymous more and more with stakeholders that cut across many different mm. groups. And so the, the cost factors, I mean, the, the first I want to highlight is the obvious one, the financial um, factor. Mm. Uh, so there's the aspect where it's been proven, studies have proven that organizations can realize financial benefits 
um, in their operations, in their cost of operations, uh, by driving better operational improvements, mm. right? So reducing their cost to capital. And then you have the other side, which is, you know, the rising um, ESG or impact investment. Mm. So investor side pressure yep. to invest in organizations that are demonstrating that they have mm. performance metrics uh, that they are monitoring and improving on. So if organizations are not ready to report on what matters, mm. they can lose out on investor funding and, and ultimately start falling behind their competitors. Mm. The, the second one that does have a knock-on effect in terms of the financial cost is the reputational risk or negative social impact. Mm. So more and more you have stakeholders interested in what the organization is doing with their workforce, with their supply chains, um, with, with matters of human rights. And these are under scrutiny. So organizations that can't respond quickly and demonstrate how they're putting their words into action are likely to experience brand damage. Mm. And then the last one is legal. Mm. So as all of these uh, reporting frameworks come about, there are uh, ESG related um, disclosures that are required. And coming with that is the risk of being found to be in an ESG related misconduct in mm. as far as the disclosure is concerned. And that can come with a regulatory infraction or a fine. So that sounds quite daunting, Isabel. Mm. So maybe let's help organizations to understand from a practical perspective, what are some of the, the basic things that they need to have in place and, and what does good really look like? So how can we help organizations to move towards advanced systems a little bit more quickly? Do you have some thoughts on that? I have some thoughts. It is a mammoth task. Mm. I do have some <laughs> thoughts. So I suppose I touched on a little bit um, on the point that organizations really need to focus on those ESG, ESG metrics mm -hmm. that they need to infuse throughout their operations and then create transparency, right, as to how they're performing. Mm. So the first thing they need to do then is really bed down what matters. Yeah. And what matters needs to first and foremost be driven by what is good for the organization, what will result in the organization's sustainable health and growth, mm. what is required from a stakeholder perspective, and then what is required from a standards um, and regulatory perspective where those standards and regulations exist. Um, so that will create clarity on the metrics that matter. Mm. And, and then start with what you have, because all organizations today have underlying systems that enable their end-to-end -end business processes across human resource management, supply chain, finance. And those systems are used to record data at source throughout their operations. So it's important to invest the time to understand what you have today that you can start with and then put in place the mechanisms to collect that data, mm. to analyze that data, and start thinking about how you can transform it into value and start reporting on it. Mm. Okay. So it sounds easy, start with what you have, mm. but actually there's a, there's a requirement to look at the internal capacity and capability that is required to do that. So, I mean, Yes, ESG has been in the spotlight for some years now. Yeah. But as I said, it's never been part of the organization's core function. Mm. So in gearing yourself towards reporting, it's important to build those squads that go all the way from the leadership mm -hmm. to process owners to the technology teams that are tasked with maintaining and refining the solutions that are enabling them to collect the data, transform the data. And it's important that they work in these optimal squads because then they can take from the point of strategy to the point of execution, mm. a common thread. Yeah. Uh, having said that, there will be a need to select, uh, prioritize and invest in new digital tools and accelerators. So many of the sustainable practices as they're evolving 
will require different forms of data collation, uh, will re require different tools to support their processes. Mm. And it's important to stay on top of those, to have individuals within the teams that are constantly staying ahead of the curve in terms of what's available in the markets. And then, you know, with, with all of these factors, there are two things that are not negotiable. The first is prioritizing the quality and reliability of the data. Mm -hmm. Shareholders expect transparency. They need to trust what is being shared in yeah. the reporting. And the second is change management because it's fundamental change across the organization. So investing in communication and training and adoption programs is, is fundamental to achieving success. Mm. And, and Isabel, so you mentioned, you know, the systems that are available. Mm. You talked a little bit about, you know, the quality of the data, et cetera, the, the technology. I want to dig into that, you know, to close us off. Um, okay. So from a technology perspective, how can technology help us to facilitate some of this change? And, and you know, with your experience, mm. obviously, in the technology consulting space, just help us to understand, you know, the role that that technology really plays in, in getting us to the right outcome. Sure. So... For me, technology is the constant mm -hmm. and the key enabler in helping organizations achieve a position where they're able to analyze, report on how they're performing and steer their organizations in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I spoke briefly about the technology that exists today. Yeah. Enterprise applications that organizations use on an ongoing basis to enable their processes, mm -hmm. to automate their processes recording that data at source. Um, so already technology is fundamental to recording the metrics that matter. Mm. Then you have our technology vendors that have really invested time to build out data and analytics platforms mm. that facilitates collection of data from multiple data sources within the organization, within their ecosystems, uh, and then not only collecting the data, but making it simpler to transform it, to mm. analyze it, to visualize it. So there, there are huge advancements um, in, in that data and analytics layer and that platform as, as a service. And then we have developments in technology that are quite niche, mm. that meet industry-specific requirements, accelerators. So, you know, technology solutions that help you with responsible design and production, technology solutions that can help you with um, health and safety in a mining environment. Mm -hmm. uh, there are various solutions available today that help organizations along their decarbonization journey, mm. helping them understand and measure their indirect, direct emissions, their emissions on the part of their value chains, uh, I, I, the list is, there's, there's quite oh, a yes. list because, you know, solutions for, for um, uh, governance uh, mm -hmm. and risk and compliance, solutions for supply chain management, Absolutely. diversity and inclusion. Mm. So I think the, the message here is technology can't be something that is done to ESG. Mm. It is part and parcel uh, of ESG success. So organizations should really look at their internal teams. They should look at who they partner with, mm. at the tools they invest in to make sure that they're, they're driving the right decisions to help them really manage that strategy all the way through to action. Mm. And, and I love that sentiment, Isabel, because you know what I'm gathering from you is technology is really an enabler here mm -hmm. that's going to help an organization you know, get to that right end point. And, and it's also wonderful to hear how much you know, while it's rapidly changing, uh, and that can be quite daunting, I'm sure, for organizations, there's also a lot of opportunity to capitalize on, it seems, uh, as well. Absolutely. So it's been absolutely wonderful to hear from you, Isabel, uh, I think, to get your insights into this particular topic and to help us understand how organizations can really operationalize ESG within their business. I think I've loved that you've shared some of the practical insights as well, so some great takeaways. Um, and yeah, I think that closes this uh, particular series for our PwC Boardroom Forum live uh, series. And we are looking forward to having the audience join us for some of the topics that are going to come up in future. Thanks, Isabel. Thank you very much.